Hey everyone, hope you're having a good weekend. So you guys have been seeing me use the Exodus desktop wallet uh, in some of my demos. So I figured I would do a tutorial on how to use the wallet and go through the features that it offers. So to start, what we're going to want to do is go to the exodus.io website and go to download. And then you're going to want to download the newest Exodus desktop wallet. Once you do that and install, it's going to go to the wallet and this is the screen that you'll open up on and what you'll be seeing. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to backup here and create a password. It should be a unique password if you are a forgetful person. Make sure that you write it down that way you don't lose it. And it's going to ask you to type it in again. Hit next. And now this part right here, what it's going to ask you to do is write down your recovery phrase. So this is a 12 word phrase. And what you're going to want to do is write it down on a piece of paper. You're not going to want to take a picture of it or make a digital copy in any way because that puts your recovery word phrase at risk of being hacked online um, and putting the risk of your funds being stolen. So what you're going to want to do is get a trusty pen and a piece of paper and write down your seed word phrase now and then we'll keep going after you're done. Okay guys, so once you finish writing down your recovery seed, just scroll down here and as you can see it says protect against loss. Uh, keep two copies. So what you want to do is just write it down now and then make a second copy, store it somewhere else. That way you have a backup just in case you know that you get the first one damaged. So now we'll press next and it's going to ask you to verify one of your words. Uh, so I'll just do that right now real quick and then hit finish. And that's it. So now you've created your backup recovery seed and you've, rec uh, you've made your password. Okay, now once you're done setting things up, you'll see this is the main page. It basically has a listing of all the major tokens that it supports, current prices. If you want to add one that you currently hold that's not on the main list here, you just scroll down to the bottom and go to add more. And you can search whatever token you'd like. They have support for over 110 tokens. So any of these tokens listed here, you can create a wallet for and store on the wallet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some Ethereum on the Exodus wallet just to show you guys uh, some of the functions that you can use within the wallet itself. So to do so, I'm just going to go to make my first deposit and I'm going to be depositing some Ethereum. So I'm just going to scroll down to Ethereum, hit receive. And now this is my Ethereum address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and send some Ethereum to Exodus. Okay. And as you can see, I've received the Ethereum that I just sent to my wallet. Basically, this is the wallet area where you can access any of the tokens that you want to store on the Exodus wallet. So if I wanted to store some Litecoin, I would just click on Litecoin and then hit receive and there's your address. If you want to add another token, like I said earlier, that you're not, uh, that you don't see on this list, you can just go to add more and search for any tokens, right? If you want to add Monero, you would just search XMR, hit the check mark, go back to your wallet and now you'll see that Monero is on the list and you can receive tokens for Monero. So this is the wallet section. Uh, there's another feature called exchange where basically Exodus has its own exchange kind of built in where you can swap from token to token. So as you can see, I added some Ethereum. So what I would do is I would switch to Ethereum here. And if I wanted to swap to Bitcoin, I could do that by just hitting the all button. And as you can see here, it'll tell me how much uh, Bitcoin is priced at, how much Bitcoin I'll receive for my Ethereum. And it takes a fee, as you can see here, I have $163 here and I'll receive 155. So there is a pretty, I would say, Average hefty fee uh, for transferring between both, but it does have the function built in uh, if you want to use this uh, instead of registering on an exchange, right? There's no uh, data required for, you know, KYC for your name, your address, that kind of thing, right? So it is more of an anonymous way to uh, exchange your cryptocurrencies, which is a feature and uh, it's a bonus. Now, it doesn't just have to be Bitcoin. I can transfer into any token that the wallet currently supports, right? So if I wanted to say I wanted to buy some Dash, I would just select all and it'll show me how much dash I can get for the Ethereum that I currently own. So now that we've gone through exchange and we've gone through the wallet portion. Uh, there's one more feature that I wanted to uh, tell you guys about is that Exodus actually uh, allows you to store funds through your Tracer and link it directly. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my Tracer device to my computer and I'm going to unlock my Tracer. And once my Tracer is unlocked, the Exodus hardware wallet will recognize that I have a Tracer device. It's going to say Tracer detected. Would you like to pair the two? And you're going to say yes. I want to connect it. And now it's going to initiate the pairing 
procedure. This could take anywhere from you know 30 seconds to a few minutes, depending on how much data that you have currently on your Tracer device. Now, once the pairing is completed, it's basically going to create uh, a secondary wallet on your Exodus wallet. So you'll have your web wallet section, and then you'll have your Tracer section. So as you can see, it says Tracer successfully paired, continue to portfolio. And now you'll see that there's a secondary wallet linked to your Exodus wallet. So you have your main web wallet here with all of your tokens, and then you can switch to your Tracer device. So these two are separate, right? Exodus has tokens that Tracer currently doesn't support, like for example, Neo. So you'll see it if I were to add Neo on here, I can add it on my web wallet, but Tracer doesn't support it, right? So there's certain tokens that Tracer doesn't have access to that Exodus does, which is a good feature for the web wallet, but you won't be able to store like something like Neo on your Tracer. So I just wanted to make sure that I explain that. So if we go back to wallet now, and I want to move this Ethereum off of my web wallet to my Tracer device for added security, I can do that. So I can just switch over to Tracer here, click on Ethereum, click receive. Here's my Tracer hardware wallet Ethereum address. I'm going to copy that. Go back to my web wallet, select send, paste in my Tracer address. And I'm just going to put in half there for the demo purposes. And I'm going to hit send. And it's going to say, are you sure? I'm going to say, yep. I know that's my address, hit send. And just like that, I've moved my Ethereum from my web wallet, which is online, to my Tracer hardware wallet. So if I were to unplug my Tracer now, I have the 0.396 Ethereum on the wallet. I can put it away and store it safely. Now, if I wanted to reverse this process, I, all I would do is I'd plug my Tracer back in. I'd go back to my web wallet. I would choose receive. And I would just copy this address here, go back to my Tracer, hit send, paste my address in. And then basically I can move my Ethereum from my Tracer back to my Exodus wallet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit send and it's gonna say, do you really wanna do this? I'm gonna say yes. Now this time it's gonna ask you to confirm on your Tracer device, right? So this is the added layer of security that we've added with the, with the hardware wallet, right? So you can't just, somebody just can't hack your wallet and then send the funds, right? Without there being any any, uh, any pushback or any issue. So as you can see here, it's asking me, do I wanna send the funds from my hardware wallet to my web wallet? I'm gonna say yes. Then it's gonna ask me to confirm it and hold. And I'll do that as well. And I've sent my Ethereum that I had on my Tracer back to my Exodus wallet. So everything is on this interface is pretty easy to use. I would say it's, uh, for beginners, it's actually a great wallet to use. Uh, everything's kind of in one place. You don't have to, you know, go, let's say if you were, you're storing Neo, you don't need to go to the Neo wallet and download their web wallet, or let's say like basic attention token, you don't need to download their wallet, right? You can kind of do everything all in one uh, versus having to have like 30 to 50 wallets on your computer, right? With 30 to 50 different private keys. So it's kind of like an all in one solution. Um, I use it for, basically keeping small amounts of uh, cryptocurrency on that I like to trade with. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, I don't really want to have to plug in my trays or every single time to send funds. Right. So I keep, I keep Exodus as like a middleman wallet. Uh, usually I'll keep, you know, anywhere from hundred dollars to a thousand dollars on there. Uh, but nothing more unless it's stored on my, on my Tracer. And I think that's pretty much it guys. Uh, if I miss anything, you can post a comment down below. Um, we went through backing up, how to set your password, how to set your recovery phrase. We went through how to exchange tokens from one to another. We went through how to access your funds on your wallet and add tokens. We went through how to link your Tracer device and send it back and forth from your Exodus to your Tracer. And we also went through our main portfolio section. If you wanted to look through past transactions, you would just go to transactions and you'll see the history of all the transactions you've made. And one final thing, guys, before I wrap up the video, uh, Exodus is supposed to be releasing a brand new wallet, uh, I think within four days. Um, so I'm not too sure how extensive of an update uh, this is going to be. But if the UI changes in a massive way, they add new features, um, I'll most likely be doing another video for you guys. And that's it. So if you guys enjoyed the content today, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.